Hey there. Welcome to the River City Yarns Crochet Along. Um, we're going to feature three different patterns by Church Mouse Yarns and Tea. Um, and so if you haven't picked a pattern yet, I encourage you to go over to Church Mouse's website and purchase one of these patterns and crochet along with us. Um, we're working on the crocheted baskets. That's one option. Uh, the oval crocheted bucket bag or pouches. And the crossbody, um, uh, the crossbody bags or clutches. Uh, it's a brand new project from Church Mouse Yarns and Tea. I'm using several different yarns, which I'll show you in the beginning of this video. And I just wanted to remind you that during the duration of the Cal, the crochet along, if you'd like to purchase any of these products on our website, we're offering 10% off uh, on any of your purchases of these specific yarns. Um, if you use the hashtag, hashtag RCYCAL. So um, yeah, if you need anything, drop over to our website, um, put the code into the web coupon uh, bar on your purchase screen and um, join us. Okay, so I've got pretty much everything I need to do my um, my crochet project from Church Mouse Yarns and Tea. So I've got um, all three patterns. Now, um, the idea is that you pick one and you work on it, and I'm going to show you how to get started on all of these three. So I thought I'd better have all three of them. Um, and uh, there's just a few tools that you need. So you need some yarn, uh, which I've got. My yarn over here. And you need some tools. I've got a collection of crochet hooks and some locking stitch markers. And that's pretty much it. So let's uh, let's take a look at um, these patterns one by one and just I'll talk to you about a little bit about materials required. So for the uh, crocheted baskets, um, Church Mouse Yarns and Tea has made a few recommendations. One of the yarns that they use is the hand knit cotton. Uh, I've got some hand knit cotton here in a really pretty blue. Uh, so you can use that. And then they call for a crochet hook that's quite a bit smaller. Um, in this case, they're talking about using a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook. Um, you want to make your baskets really tight. So that's the reason why you have such a small hook with a yarn that normally uh, they recommend four to four and a half millimeter. Um, a four to four and a half millimeter needle on it. But the idea behind these projects, whether it's the baskets, the bucket bags or the cross body bags is that you are trying to create a fabric that is dense and firm, particularly with the baskets. If, if you want your edges to sit up straight, you need to use a fabric. You need to create a fabric that is firm. So that's why uh, it's good to have a couple of different sizes of crochet hook with you and to, um, to use whichever hook gives you a very stiff kind of fabric for for your project. Um, so if you were going to do the crochet baskets, you just need yarn, um, you need a crochet hook, and you need some locking stitch markers. A darning needle to weave in ends later on is helpful. For the uh, oval crocheted bucket bags and pouches, this, uh, this pattern gives you a couple of different options. You can create a bucket bag that is large or one that's small. Um, and you can also do uh, pouches, and these pouches can vary in size as well. They can be tall or they can be small. And so in here, again, they're recommending, some yarns that they're recommending uh, are Rowan Hand Knit Cotton, which I just showed you. Um, I'm going to use, for the oval crocheted bucket bag, I'm going to use Barocco Pima. Uh, so I've got it in these two colors here, um, and I'm going to use them to create a darker bottom and a lighter top. On there. I love this Barocco Pima because it's so soft. Um, I think it would feel really nice um, if I was wearing, you know, like a sleeveless top or it would just feel nice and cozy. So that's what I'm going to choose. That's what I'm choosing to use for the oval crocheted bucket bag. The uh, crocheted crossbody bags, um, Church Most Yarns and Tea has you has have used uh, Rowan Creative Linen. And so I've picked out two colors of Rowan Creative Linen for my project. And I, I wound one of these skeins up into a ball last night because I was very excited about getting started on it. Um, and so this is a nice 
um, combination of cotton and linen and I, I really like it and they recommend two skeins to do the large cross body bag. There is a large version and then there's a small version and there's a clutch. For the smaller version they've used a yarn that we don't have but I thought it would be fun to try Barocco Medina. This is a self-striping yarn that is a combination of cotton, acrylic and viscose and I think it would be really nice in this cross body bag. The, um, the gauge on the crossbody bags isn't as dense as the baskets, so you can, use, um, you can use a crochet hook that gives you a slightly more open gauge. And that's because you want it to be small enough that things don't fall through, but it doesn't have to stand up on its own. So um, you can have a little more freedom with your crochet hook on these ones. And the clutch, I'm really looking forward to doing the clutch too. Here's a... Uh, Here's a picture of the clutch in my pattern. Um, this is really cool because the handles are built in. So the handles just are kind of hidden from view here, but they're folded over in there. And they do something very clever to make those handles um, stay um, firm. Uh, let me put it that way. So uh, when you purchase that pattern, there's some really good hints about how to make your handles stay from getting, from getting stretched out and warped. And then I also have my Church Mouse Classroom Learn to Crochet Companion. So uh, at any time I'm not quite sure what to do or I forget how to make a stitch or I just need some advice from the experts at Church Mouse, this little um, booklet is a step-by-step -step guide on how to crochet, how to weave in your ends. Um, it's, it's a really good book. So um, if you are looking for something to help you with... Um, with your crochet technique, uh, I would recommend this Learn to Crochet Companion. Okay, let's get started. Uh, for my crocheted basket, I'm using two yarns held together. I'm using Rowan Summerlight DK and BC Garn Lino. I've picked two shades of green to work together. And I'm using a 4.5 millimeter uh, Clover Amour crochet hook. You, when you're making baskets or um, when you're making anything crocheted that you want to be stiff, then you need to crochet at a very tight gauge. Uh, so that's why I've got these two yarns uh, that I'm going to hold together and I'm using a hook that's smaller than what I would normally use for this kind of project. Uh, this uh, basket begins in the middle in the round and so I'm going to show you how to get started uh, crocheting in a circle. I've taken the ball bands off my yarn and I'm going to slip and I'm pulling from the outside edge of both of these yarns. You can pull from the inside, uh, that's that's fine, but I do find with um, yarns like linen and sometimes with cotton too that um, as you pull from the inside when the ball collapses uh, you tend to get issues and problems. So I'm just going to pop these balls of yarn into my new little basket or you can put them in a yarn bowl, or you can put them in a bowl bowl, or you can just let them roll around on the floor. Um, and that will keep them together and, um, anyway, pulling from the outside sometimes is less of a hassle in the long run because your yarn stays neater to the end. Uh, so in the baskets, we're gonna start with um, a little circle at the base. And so we, we begin by chaining six. Now um, six is that's just a number, so I'm going to do that here. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then you join your chain together with a slip stitch. So to do a slip stitch, you just insert your hook into the first chain next to the little, it's basically it's your slip knot. And then you yarn over and you pull through everything on your hook. So there's no height at all. To this um, to this slip stitch and then uh, we're going to work um, you're going to work 12 single crochets into the rings so I'm going to chain one first and then I'm going to work 12 single crochets in here and again if you have a hard time remembering where you started because things get pretty crowded I uh, you can attach a stitch marker actually 
I'm going to put my stitch marker at the top of my chain one. Okay. Oh, look at that. I used the tail. <laughs> so let me do that again. There's my slip stitch. Do my chain one with the long tail, not the short one. Put my marker on there. And now I'm going to do 12 single crochets into the circle. So that means I'm going to insert my hook right into the circle. As I do that, I'm also going to cover up my, my long tail. I like to leave a longer tail for this and I'll show you why when we're done. So 12 single crochets into the circle. Not a bad idea to count as you go. So I know I've done two, but because my marker is here, I can count this one as my first one and this V as my second one. So one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And so I've, I'm just going to pull on my yarn here. I have um, encased my tail in the uh, um, in, inside that round of single crochets and the reason for doing that is I won't do it now but later on you can pull on this and close that hole tighter. It's easier to work if the hole isn't so tight right now so I'm going to leave it open for now but that's sort of like your drawstring that's buried inside there and you can pull on it later. Uh, for uh, round two we're going to uh, place a marker on the last single crochet don't turn your work and then we're going to do one single crochet on each um, on each single crochet in the row below so on the row up below. So I'm going to put my marker onto the loop here like that and now I'm going to do a single crochet in every single crochet here. So again you're just counting one, two, getting caught up on my linen there, three, Four, count to my head, So there's 12 and I'm back at my first one. The next, uh, the next round and some subsequent rounds call for increasing. And so, well, I don't want to give away too much of the pattern um, because that wouldn't be nice <laughs> for church most, but I will show you how to do an increase. Um, the increase is basically just doing the same stitch in the same spot more than once. So on this next round I'm going to increase right away. So I'll move my marker here and I'm going to do two single crochets in this first stitch. So I go into it and I do one single crochet and then back right into the same spot and do two single crochets. So here's my next one, I'll show you again. So I go into the next stitch, do one single crochet, and then right into the same spot again, two single crochets. All right, so the beginning is a spiral that works around, um, and you're always, you should count as you, as you go around. Um, but you're going to work in a spiral and follow the pattern instructions from here and I'll meet you at the next part which is uh, where we're going to do a turning round. 
36. So I've been working along here on my spiral and I've just completed, let's see here, I've just completed uh, round five. And so I wanted to show you at this point here about, I'm just going to put my, I'm just going to clip my locking stitch marker here. That will remind me to put it back on that stitch when I begin the next round, but it also prevents my work from pulling out when it's uh, sitting in my bag. So let's just talk about this center piece here and pulling on it now to close that hole. So if you just pull, I know my thumb's carrying over, but I'm just pulling on that like this. You see how that just zips it up nice and neatly. Okay, and then I can take my wool needle and I can bury that yarn thread in here some more. Give it a good pull. It's really nice and tight down here, so I'm just pulling it through as best I can. The more times you go around this circle, the less likely it is to loosen up later. So if you weren't able to bury your tail in the beginning, uh, but you still wanted to pull on it like a drawstring, you could always do exactly what I'm doing now, which is just weaving in my ends. But as I do that, I'm also pulling it even tighter. So you could just weave your end in afterwards. Oh man, that's tight. So I think I'll be good. I love these aluminum wool needles with a nylon loop at the top because that makes weaving in your end so much easier. There you go, nice and tight and I'll, I'll trim that off a little bit later. Um, but I wanted to show you now to what I'm going to do. So one of the things that Church Mouse cleverly suggests for this particular one is you can make a basket, but you can also make a cozy for something. So I've got here a, a big heavy glass plant pot, and I like the color, but I think that it might be nice to have an option of covering it in green. So I'm going to make the base of my basket the same width as this glass vase, and then I'll do my turning chain. Uh, so I'm going to deviate from the pattern a little bit at that point. So that's just an option. If you have something round that you want to cover, you can uh, continue to increase and work the base of your basket until it's just at this uh, it's just the width of your um, thing that you want to cover, and then you can go up for the sides. So that's what I'm going to do with my uh, with my glass vase. All right, uh, keep crocheting, and uh, we'll keep we'll keep calling along. In this video, I'm going to start by showing you how to begin the oval crocheted bucket bags and pouches. These projects all begin the same way, um, so I'm going to demonstrate on the beginning of a pouch. But again, the instructions are exactly the same if you're working on, um, on one of the little backpacks. Uh, so you're going to begin by crocheting just picking my crochet hook here. Um, you're going to begin by crocheting a chain. So um, with, your, with your yarn and your hook, begin with a slip knot and crochet the number of stitches required by your pattern. Um, in this case, if you're working on the bucket bag, it'll be the first number and if you're working on the pouch, it'll be the second number in brackets. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'll show you how to carry on. So do your chain and then meet me at this next point coming up. Remember if you want to count, you're basically counting each little heart that's on your, 
on your chain or you can count the bumps on the back of your chain whichever is easiest for you to see uh, but it's a good idea before you get going to count your stitches and just make sure you have the right number once you have the number of stitches that are required for your chain we're going to begin working um, around the chain to create this oval shape so the first instruction is to single crochet in the back bump of the second chain from the hook. So if you take a close look at your chain, you'll see that it has a flat side and it has a ridged side, like a bumpy side. Um, I sort of think of it as like a Toblerone bar. And so we want to work into the ridged edge, the bumpy side of the work. So normally your chain might be facing you this way and you may be counting your stitches like this along the flat side. So now you're going to turn it slightly and in the second bump from the hook you're going to work your first single crochet. Before I do that I'm going to put a locking stitch marker on this on the neck of this stitch to mark it. This will be the first stitch of my round even though there's really not much of a round here to begin with. So I just closed my locking stitch marker and I hung it over the neck of the stitch and inserted my crochet hook back in there to mark that stitch. So there's the first bump, there's the second bump. I'm going to single crochet into the second bump. So you insert your hook into the bump, yarn over and pull that yarn over through to the front, yarn over and pull your hook through both loops on your hook. Let's do that again. Find the next bump on the bumpy side of your chain, insert your hook underneath that bump, yarn over, pull the yarn over through to the front of your work so that you have two loops on your hook, and then yarn over and pull through both loops. You're going to do that all the way down the chain, um, working into the back bump and doing single crochets all the way down. Um, your pattern will tell you how many stitches you should have when you're done that. Um, and I'm just going to show you that in a second how to count. In the beginning, when you're working in the chain, it's slow work. So know that it will go faster. But in the beginning, while you're picking up these stitches on the back bump, it just takes a little bit of patience. If you want to count your stitches, having that marker in there is really helpful. Um, you can count the little single crochet ridges down here. I've got one, two, three, four, five. But it's a little bit easier for me to count the little ridges or the chains on the back of the stitch. So counting from my marker, I have one, two, three, four, five. Um, so I'm going to keep going until I have the required number of stitches along the back side of this chain. Okay, so I have worked along the back bump of my um, foundation chain um, and I've done it the number of times. So there's one at the beginning and then you work along the back bumps and you should work until you get to the very last chain. That's where your um, slip knot was. So you have one chain left on your um, foundation chain. Um, if you're counting, you're going to count this first stitch plus the number of stitches that you're supposed to have across. So you will have, um, in my case, I'm supposed to have 20, I'm supposed to have crocheted 21 more times. I count 22 with this first one, but that's okay. That's the way it's supposed to be. Now, you're going to work uh, three single crochets in the last chain. So you're going to insert your hook into this last space three times. And so I'm working one single crochet and then you're going to insert it again, work a second single crochet, and then again work another single crochet into the end. And without turning your work, leaving it just like this, you're going to continue to single crochet along this edge. Um, you're going to work into the same space that you worked above. So you're going to work into these two, you're going to work inside the flat edge that you um, didn't work into last time. So you're just going to insert your hook into the very same space. I'll get that tail out of the way here. 
into the very same space that you crocheted on above. Let me pull that out again and show you. So here's the flat edge. I'm going under both edges of it so that my hook is actually going into the same space that it was on the opposite side. And I'm putting a single crochet in here. Okay, and then into the next space, just under the little V that's sitting on top, the flat edge of your chain, yarn over and pull it through. Wiggle it back so that you have two loops on your hook and complete the single crochet. See that nice round edge there? Keep going. Now if you're an experienced crocheter, you can bury your tail as you go along. Um, by holding it next to the edge that you're crocheting along. But I'm going to leave it tucked out. And for those of you who haven't done that before, I'll show you how to deal with it when we get to the end of this first round. Okay, so you're going to single crochet across the edge here. Um, the number of times required in your pattern. And when you get to the end, I'll show you what to do. I'll meet you there. All right, you're, as you're crocheting along, you may be wondering about when you're at the last space. So I'm just going to show you here that I can see that I have two spaces left on the edge of my row. So I'm going to pop one single crochet into this last space here. And then I need to work two single crochets into this space right here. If you wanted to count back from, from where you turned, you can kind of find the edge of your work and you should be able to see three stitches right there. One, two, three. And I see them best by looking at the edge of them. And then you can count from there. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. Back along here. But when you get to the last space on the edge of your chain, you're going to pop two single crochets into that last space. Why two and not three uh, on as on the... Uh, the other the other edge, that's because you've got one still sitting here and we marked it right at the beginning of the round. So there's one, two here, and now I'm going to slip stitch to connect this round together. So in the same space that my stitch marker is in, I'll take it out now, I'm going to do a slip stitch. So a slip stitch is just insert your hook into the space, yarn over and bring the yarn over through, and through the loop that's on your hook. So it's a very short, um, it's a very short, it's just joining the round together. It's not actually really much of a stitch at all. Um, so you can count your stitches now. You should have um, three single crochets at each end, including that one that you just joined there. So one, two, one, two, three. Um, and you should have uh, the number of stitches in between the two ends that you want. So three on each end and a number of straight single crochets in between. Uh, so now it's time to work round two. And we're going to do some increases in round two and we're going to attach some locking stitch markers. So it's good to have four locking stitch markers at this point and for one of those locking stitch markers to be a different color than the rest that will help you to know which is the beginning of the round. So grab four locking stitch markers one of which is a different color and meet me back here for round two. All right round two marking your stitches and increasing. Uh, so we're going to begin by marking the first stitch so the way I do that is to take my hook out Close my locking stitch marker, place it over the um, stitch, and then snug it up a little bit. So uh, we're now going to be working the straight edge of the oval, and so you're going to work in the next however many stitches your pattern calls for. Um, I'm just going to tell you that the stitch that I'm going to start, on, start in is not the one that is attached to my stitch. So if I pull on the yarn, I can see the yarn is coming through this stitch. That stitch is not the one I'm going to work in. I'm going to work in the next one. So I'm going to do a series of single crochets along the edge here. 
just ignore that stitch marker. It's, uh, it's just marking a stitch. It's doing its thing. Work along the edge, counting as you go. I'll meet you at the next corner. All right, I've counted across my work, starting with where my marker is. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on. Counted across here to make sure that I have the right number of stitches for the straight edge side of my crochet project. And um, now I'm going to work the corner. So again, before I do that, I'm going to take my next locking stick mar stitch marker, slide it onto the loop that's on my crochet hook. And now to work the corner and increase, we need to do two single crochets in each of the next three spaces. So to increase in crochet is really quite simple. You're just going to insert your crochet hook into the next space do one single crochet and then you're going to insert your hook into the same space so you see I just kind of pull it over like that to create a bit more of a hole insert my hook into the same space yarn over pull the yarn over through and do another single crochet in that same space you do it again here so it's very tight in the corner and um, I'm working this quite densely, so my hook is um, fighting to get in there a little bit. And a hook being what it is, you just have to have lots of patience. Know that it's going to get easier. Okay, so find the space where you can get under there. Um, insert your hook yarn over. Bring it back to the front, work one single crochet, and then now that you've got that hole there, you can do another one right away. So insert your hook in and do two, and then two more. And if you're not quite sure where to put your hook, just put it where just put it where you can. Um, it is the bottom of the bag and so it's uh, or the pouch, so it's not going to show very much. When you've done your six uh, stitches along the edge, put your marker on your loop and carry on along this side, uh, working single crochets along the straight edge, uh, along the long side of your oblong. All right, keep going. So just a note about counting. Again, I'm getting up to my second rounded corner. And so I can count backwards here. I need, one, I need three stitches on this corner. So there's one, two, three. So I can see that I have one stitch left here to single crochet in. But if I was counting from the other direction, um, where your stitch is marked, that is the first stitch. That you will count. Um, and behind it, so if I'm looking at the corner here, here's the first stitch I want to count in my corner, and I should have six stitches along here. So the one that's marked is number one, then two, three, four, five, six. So that makes this marker number one for this edge of my oblong. So if you are counting, count from your marker, and, um, and then we're going to place another marker here. So go ahead and count first to make sure you've got the right number of stitches. One, two, three, four. Okay, and knowing that you have the right number of stitches along the edge is a good thing. If you need to cram another one in there, go ahead and do it. Um, it's better to get it correct on this round so you don't have to work with uneven sides. And now before we do the last rounded corner, again, I'm going to take my hook out, close up my marker, slip it over the neck of the loop, stick my stitch marker back in there and I'm going to work these um, three stitches at the very end. All right, so we're going to work two single crochets in each of the next three single crochets. So one, and then again right in the same hole put a second single crochet in and then in the next one These rounded corners are very tight, so don't be surprised if you have to work your hook in 
and out to get around here. It does get easier, trust me. Okay, this last one here. I'm using the Rowan Hand Knit Cotton and a four millimeter hook. So slightly bigger than what the pattern calls for, but as you can see, it's small enough for me. There's five and there is six. Uh, so there's no, no, no slip stitch at the end of the second round. All right, here's what your beginning uh, base should look like. You'll have six stitches in between your markers and your different colored marker or your different, your different looking marker uh, will be at this end to show you that you're at the beginning of the round. Um, so in round three, uh, you're basically going to do the same thing following the instructions. The increases are going to occur at the ends because we have to fan out around the end. So just follow the instructions, working straight along the sides and increasing over the end corners until your, um, until your base is as wide as you want or you've completed the number of rounds required in the pattern. Again, remember that this is a little bit of your own project. So if you feel like the base is wide enough or long enough or you want to vary the length of the base, go right ahead. That is totally your thing to do. Okay, um, keep going and um, I will meet you back here when it's time to do the turning round. All right, I'm going to show you how to get started on your crossbody uh, bag uh, first. So the crossbody bag um, I'm going to work on is, uh, well, it doesn't matter whether you work on the big one or the small one, they both start in exactly the same way. Um, I'm actually going to do the small bag using my Barocco Medina. But I started to use it as an instructional video and I think the yarn is just the wrong color for being able to see what I'm doing. So I want you to, I want you to be able to see this. So I'm going to change right now and, and just use my creative linen for a little bit. So you start with a slip knot <clears throat> and then you're going to work chains. So um, you know how to make a chain. You're just going to yarn over and pull through the loops. Make the number of chains that you need to for the bag size that you're making. And if you forget how many chains you've made, you can count them. Just, I like to look at the flat side of the work and I count the little hearts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Counting is kind of an important part of the project. So, Keep doing it. The hook and the yarn that I'm using are bigger than what I should be using for this project, but again, um, I wanted to make sure that you could see what I was doing in this video. So know that if it looks a little loose, um, that's because I'm using a bigger hook than I probably need to. And now we're going to work across the chain we're going to work into the back bumps. Uh, so in the pattern they tell you to work single crochets into these back bumps. So if you're having trouble finding them, remember that your chain has two sides really. One is a flat side that looks a bit like those sheaves of wheat and the other is a ridged back um, kind of pointy side. So I like to think of it as the peak of a Toblerone bar. And across the back there are these little bumps. Here's one right here. Here's one right here. You can feel them even better than you can see them. So I'm going to work uh, single crochets in the little bumps. Before I do that, I'm going to put a locking stitch marker just over the neck of this first stitch that's on my hook, and that will help to remind me where I'm counting from. So I find the ridge, the, the first stitch that has a ridge that doesn't have any yarn coming out of it. So this very first stitch here has yarn coming out of it, I'm going to work in the second stitch from the hook and I'm working into that bump, 
put my hook through, yarn over, pull the yarn forward so that I have two loops on my hook, and then yarn over and pull through both loops. That is a single crochet. Find the next bump on your chain, yarn over, pull it through the bump so that you have two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through both loops. So that's a single crochet. You're going to work a single crochet in every bump along the back of the chain, counting as you go. But if you forget to count, you can go back to your marker and you can count from there. So I've got one, two, three, four, four, one, two, three, four chains uh, here. So four single crochets underneath me. All right, so you're going to work across the chain until you get to the last stitch. Go ahead and do that, or hit pause here, uh, and on the next part I'll show you what to do when you get to the end of this chain. Okay, so I've worked single crochets across the back of my chain. I still have one chain left at the end here, and I've just counted my stitches to make sure that I have the right number. Um, and so now we're at the last chain and they're asking you to do three single crochets in this last chain. So I just wanted to let you know that if you're working three single crochets, uh, it just means that you're working them in the same uh, space. So find the bump on the back of that chain. Where is it? If you can't find it, just work into whatever space you can. I think this is the back bump right here. If I'm going to be stubborn about it, find it right there. But really, whatever strand you can get under is whatever you should do. So there's one, there's two, and there's three. And as I'm working these ones, my chain is loosening up so I'm just going to tighten it up there. Don't want it to be like that. And that makes your um, the base of your bag curl around which is what we want. So by putting three single crochets in that last space your bag, uh, the bottom of your bag uh, turns around. And we're trying to make an oval so that's good. Now the instructions will tell you to work the same number of stitches or the, the number of stitches across working in the same space that you worked in over here, uh, so going into the same hole. So if you turn your work around you'll see this really nice little chain edge here and you're going to be working in uh, under both of those chains. You're going to put your hook in the exact same spot that you did on the opposite side. That side's just facing down for you now. So insert your hook and do one single crochet count. There's one, there's two, there's three, and if it's tight that's good. That's what it's supposed to be. You want the bottom of your bag not to um, not to be too holy. You don't want to drop out the things that are important to you. Um, so take your time Work your way across those stitches until you get to the very last stitch on this side. All right, so I'm at my last stitch, but I just counted my work and I'm one stitch short. So I'm going to, um, I'm just going to pop an extra stitch right in here um, because I think you can do that. Um, again, rather than ripping it back and fitting them in, um, probably what I should have done was use some markers to mark my brows, but I counted and I don't have quite enough, so I put one extra in there and then I need to put two into this last space right here. So there's one, and now I'm thinking maybe that was the last space, but you know, maybe I. Maybe I have another space right here that I'm missing, but I'm just going to pop two in here. And so I have completed my round. So you can see how the base of your uh, bag is like a little oval. And I just want you to know that it's okay if your counting is off 
then you need to pop in a little stitch. You, you should count, um, and I thought I was doing that, but you know, things happen. So I've got the number of stitches now that I'm supposed to have. At the end of round one, I'm going to move my little marker and uh, because at the beginning of round two, we're going to start off with a slip stitch in that first stitch here. So to do that, you insert your hook into the first stitch, um, yarn over and pull the yarn through and pull it through the one on your hook. So it's just a little connection between the two rounds. Now I'm going to put my marker back on because I like to mark the beginning of the round. And uh, round two, we're going to uh, single crochet across the straight edge of your work and then you're going to put some increases in here. So as I go along the edge now, I'm going to count my stitches um, as I go. So this is one. And you see my marker is now through the first stitch on my row. This is two. This is three and four and so on. But if I lose count, I can always come back to my marker and count from here. One, two, three, four. All right, so work the number of single crochets across the straight edge of your bag or um, clutch. And I'll meet you at the corner and we'll do some increases. Okay, I've got the right number of stitches from my marker across this edge and I'm now at the corner and the instructions tell me to work two single crochets in each of the next three single crochets. So I'm going to insert my hook under the edge of the single crochet on the row below and work one single crochet and then go right back into the exact same spot and work a second single crochet in that same space. And then in the next single crochet I work two single crochets. And in the third single crochet, I work two single crochets. And after you've turned the corner like that, then it's just straight along the side, working single crochets and counting as you go. If you want to know where to count from, you can always put a stitch marker on the loop that you just finished. So this was my last two single crochets in the single crochet on the row below. So my last kind of increased stitch, put the marker on that stitch and keep going. It must be a locking marker or it gets embedded in your work and you can't get it out again. So make sure that you have some locking stitch markers that you can unclip when you need to. But now that that locking stitch marker is in there, if I uh, forget how many stitches I've done, I can just go back to it and count from here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, so keep going. I'm counting as I've been going, but again, I can always check by counting from my marker. And I've got the number of stitches I need along the long side of my oval. And I have three stitches left here. And again, the instructions are to work two single crochets in each of those edge stitches. So work two single crochets in the next three single crochets. This last one might be a little tricky. Just take your time. Get your hook in there. One and two. Whew, got it. Okay. Um, now we're going to begin the sides of your, I'll take this marker out now because I'm done counting. I just want my beginning of the round marker there. So now we're going to be working the sides. Once more, we're going to join this edge together with a slip stitch. So I'm going to take my marker out of here and I'll just review a slip stitch again. You put your hook under the edge of the stitch on the row below. 
yarn over and pull the yarn through to the front and through the stitch that's on your hook. So it's a very short stitch that just joins your edges together. Now uh, you're going to clip the locking stitch marker again and place it on that stitch to mark the beginning of the round. And then uh, we're going to, okay, so now we're going to do the turning ridge. Um, to do the turning ridge, you're going to work into the back leg of the stitch on the row below. So we're going to just work one stitch in every single crochet around, uh, but you're going to do it by working into the back leg. So this, this is what we call the front leg right here. I'll put my hook under it just to show you. Okay, that's the front leg. We're going to work into the back leg. So I'm going to insert my hook into the back leg of the stitch, yarn over and pull it through to the front, and then yarn over and pull through both stitches on my hook. Again, into one leg only, yarn over, pull the yarn over through, yarn over and pull through both stitches on your hook. This creates a little ridge that helps your handbag to have a defined edge that allows it to turn nicely. Okay, so you're just going to work all the way around, counting your stitches as you go, making sure that you have the same number that's called for in the pattern, and working into one leg only. I'll meet you at the end of the round. When you get to the end of the round, take your locking stitch marker out, put it onto the loop of the chain that you had just had on your hook, work your stitch in that spot, and carry on. So your locking stitch marker will always tell you where the beginning of your round is, um, and you are working in a spiral, um, and every now and then, admire your work. If you want to stop your work uh, for the night, um, I usually just pull a large loop into my um, into my work and I can sometimes tie, a, I can sometimes, you can tie a little um, slip knot in there to keep it from pulling out or you can take an extra locking stitch marker and slip it into that stitch and then it won't pull out. It stays nice and secure in there while you tuck your work away. That turning chain, it's hard to see right now, but it forms a little base on the edge of the bottom of your work. So as you're working around, make sure that you keep your turning chain on the outside. You won't see it on the inside, but it's there to provide some definition for the base of your bag. The clutch starts out exactly the same way, uh, so you can get started on whichever project you want, the small bag, the large bag, or the clutch. They all begin in the same manner. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this uh, beginning demo and uh, that you are off to a good start on your project. Um, leave me some questions in the show notes and I will answer them in video form. Take care, everybody. Have a great, uh, have a great crochet along, and enjoy, enjoy the time. Make sure you post your uh, project progress to hashtag RCYCAL. Thanks.